The Dark Summer Normandy 1944. I don't think I ever played a war game with this topic, so I'm definitely happy that somebody finally decided to explore the, 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 the subject. I'm joking, of course, and I'm always happy to play yet another game about Normandy because it's a great subject for war games, very important historically, and it does game well because you have different uh, objective situations and challenges for the two sides. The bocage is always fun to deal with. So, Normandy 1944, a war game mainly for two players, uh, one controlling the Allies, one controlling uh, the, uh, the Germans, but not necessarily for two players. Matter of fact, I did play Solitaire, I played in multiplayer solo, so controlling both sides at the best of my possibilities, and here between the randomness of combat, uh, there is a random element when it comes to reinforcements, and also uh, it's a chit pull game, so there is a random element when it comes to activating units, there is enough variety, enough unpredictability here that you can control both sides at the best of your possibilities and still be surprised all the time. The map is a large single map uh, made of paper, GMT quality, uh, very, very, very nice. I like the way it looks and also very readable, very practical. The situation is, well, Normandy 44. I think you probably know the general idea. The Allies are going to land on the beaches here. There's going to be a line of German defenses. There's going to be... A group of defenders in Cherbourg, but most of the German defenders will arrive as, as reinforcements from different locations on the edges. Weather is a big element here because, of course, if the weather is good or even just decent, sun or cloud, then the game represents the Allied air superiority, making it much harder for the Germans to move and to create a effective and effective line of defense. The Allies again will arrive there and they'll try to spread and go in different directions. The game has several instant death or instant victory depends on your side uh, conditions that will uh, force the opponents to kind of uh, design their strategy around historical objectives simply you cannot ignore things that happen historically you cannot uh, try to do much better play more efficiently than they did historically because the victory conditions will, will penalize you for that so for example the Allies must uh, try to take Cherbourg. The American side cannot ig ignore Cherbourg because otherwise there is instant victory for the uh, for the German side. Of course, you need to protect the beaches and things like that. Actually, since there are uh, many elements to victory, uh, let me just show you the player A so you get a sense of what the Allied and German sudden death conditions are. And so those are the things that you need to achieve or avoid. If instant death, instant victory is not achieved, then victory is based on, on victory points. As you can see, there is a number of, of conditions that will generate victory points. Of course, a lot of those have to do with control of specific locations on the board. So you have a lot of variety. So you have a general script. Then in its broadest sense uh, is, is fixed, but within that you have a lot of variety as to what you want to score, and how, and when, and in what order, and can you do so. The game, as I mentioned briefly, is a chit pool game. That means you will have a number of activation chits that will go for the most part inside an opaque container and then they are drawn randomly and depending on which it you draw that it will tell you which units on the board will activate and also what they do for example this chat will allow units uh, British units to uh, perform combat the map has a dividing operational line. The Americans have to stay on this side and the British on this side, at least early in the game until the, the condition is triggered. They will remove the line. This here, chit, allows American units to move or to perform combat, so this sort of thing. But said only most of these uh, chits go in the cup and are drawn randomly. Also, which chits are used every turn depends on depends on on the weather because again that will 
uh, determine who gets uh, which chits and how many of those. Another important thing, I said only some of those go in there because the Americans get to keep a chit out of the cup and to play at the beginning of the turn, so they have a little more of agency there. The German player also gets a number of reaction chits that can be played uh, from, from hand, so not from the cup, and they can be played um, as a reaction to, uh, to an enemy activation. Units on the board, units are represented by counters such as these ones, uh, typical, and I mean typical and typically good <laughs> GMT production. We have a combat factor here and movement factor. In some cases, the combat factor is split into two different numbers representing attack and defense. The dot represents a unit that cannot receive replacements. Uh, the NATO symbol, of course, represents the kind of unit that you have there. And a little number there tells you the turn in which a unit arrives as a reinforcement or in case there is uh, an, a hex number then it tells you that the unit um, <clears throat> it tells you that the unit is there on the board at the beginning of the game of course our allies are coming from the sea and there's a special procedure for the first turn when it comes to landing them they will have to fight against German units that are placed on the board in particular we're gonna have strong points whose combat value is is unknown hence the hence the marker hence the the question marker there and then well there's again a procedure for landing and I'm I'm just gonna place a bunch of random units there okay so that you get a sense I'm not gonna set it up accurately because because that's how things are these days so there's gonna be a procedure in which they land and they will want to destroy these and they will uh, enter those hexes there and you place a marker there to indicate that the beach is open that also means that the the beach has some capa some uh, defensive capability when the if the Germans counterattack there again let me place a bunch of random things there because it just looks a little better don't you think when there are units on the board so there's a procedure at the beginning for the landing, and I'll tell you, it's totally subjective, but at this point, uh, if I can play a game that does not have a special procedure for turn one, I would prefer to do so. And I wish that when we have games about Normandy, at least you were given the option, the procedure in which you land them in turn one, but also the alternative setup in which they have landed already. If we assume they landed. You give me a standard setup in which they're already there and we take it from there. I, I just would like to have that option at the level of, of setup. So, the idea is pretty simple. Again, you draw a chit and you resolve what it says, uh, unless uh, the Germans decide to play a reaction, in which case you play the reaction. Moving is what you think moving is. Units will move up to their full movement allowance, spending different amounts of points based on terrain. Again, uh, this will be influenced by weather, both because of the direct effect of weather and also because the effect the weather has on air superiority for the Allies. So how much the roads are going <laughs> to help you or not depends on several factors, for example. And so you can get bogged down in the bocage uh, quite a bit, which again makes sense historically. So just move, you know, that's uh, you move. And of course, uh, units do project a zone of control in the hexes surrounding them. Oh, what are you doing, beach marker? Stay on the beach. So, uh, you had to stop when you enter the zone of control of an enemy unit. Combat, if allowed by the chit, well, guess what? You perform combat. Combat is based on odds. So, we're going to use the combat result table. Every modifier, just, just, Sit down because this may be a little shocking. Every modifier is takes the form of a column shift. So yes, you calculate the odds uh, between the combat strength of the attacker and the combat strength of the defender. Then you shift the column based on terrain, based on special chits. 
say you can play um, chess that will increase your strength, that will give you shifts, etc., etc., terrain, auto supply, all of those elements will modify either your strength or the column in the form of combat shifts. But again, the shocking thing a little bit is that there are no modifiers to the die roll. Once you have the actual column, you roll the die, and that's it. Then you simply cross-reference the result with the column, and you obtain the effect here that you implement. I always love war games with the exchange result because it's, it's tense and exciting, and that's uh, you make progress, and you and, and it's cost and costs you a lot. So, in essence, the game is is quite simple. There are a couple of I wouldn't say fiddly, but, but elaborate elements when it comes to all the different factors, how weather affects the cost of different things on the board, uh, replacements, uh, when a unit is weakened, uh, when a unit is weakened, you can use replacements uh, to flip it back up, which again also depends on, on the weather, how many you get, and so on and so forth. But then when it comes to activating units, really is uh, combat uh, or move, or partial movement and combat with a penalty in the same activation. So it's very, it's very simple. It's very, it's very basic. It's almost a war gamer for for a beginner in that sense. Repeat the procedure turn after turn until well, one of the players has achieved instant victory, or uh, is the end of the last turn, and then you count victory points. I really enjoyed the Dark Summer. In general, you may know I like uh, cheat pool games. I like the mechanic in general, and I like the implementation of the mechanic in the Dark series of the games in the same family as the Dark Summer. And I think this is another worthy addition to this family of games. You have all the beauty and the fun of action, of action chit pull. At the same time, you have <clears throat> a degree of agency, since certain chits can be left out of the cup, and you can play them in certain ways, you can make decisions about which side of a cheat can be played, when the reaction cheat can be played, for example. But again, perfect balance between agency and chaos, a fog of war, unpredictability, um, that, that, that Clausewitzian element of, of things happening and you have no way of controlling them. And I think this game works very well in that sense, and that's, and that's great if you're playing solitaire like I did, because you're constantly presented with new problems to analyze, new dilemmas, new situations. Maybe I wonder if somebody would see that there is too much randomness, they wouldn't be pleased with the degree of randomness that the weather is going to cause, because that can really be massive. But even in that sense, the rulebook has several options in which you can handle, in which you can handle uh, the weather, and you can choose how much randomness you want in that. There is a, an option in which you can have the weather align more closely to the way it worked historically and so it's so more predictable there. But to me, that's not a problem. To me, that, that's a value because I like that degree of like, oh my gosh, I did not expect that. All of my plans had to be remade now. And since I'm playing solitaire, I don't have the problem of that becoming analysis paralysis. I guess it might be if you play against an opponent and they need to rethink their strategy entirely because they're stuck in Bocage now. So uh, it's a fun game with very interesting problems and dilemmas for both sides. The objectives that you have there, I would say they almost, they don't script, but to an extent they prescribe certain courses of action, uh, for the allies especially, because you gotta go to Cherbourg, you gotta go towards, uh, towards Brittany. Uh, there are things like that that you tend, that you have to do. But of course, the way you do them still may change from, from game to game. Uh, I find the German side very difficult to, to do well with, in a certain sense, uh, with a little more variety, because you have to choose where and how to stop, where and how to react. I guess it's one of those rare cases where the defender, while still forced to react what the opponent does, has uh, maybe the more dynamic side. Again, that may just be my impression. Because if you decide as the German player to create some really mighty stacks, they're going to taking advantage of the terrain, uh, those are going to be very difficult to destroy if attacked frontally. 
but then of course the problem is the, the allies can surround you and then you spread them out to avoid that and you have the problem that they're gonna puncture that. Ideally maybe you're gonna try to do something similar, get them to attack a strong a strong stack and then when they realize that's a good idea they have to spread out, reconcentrate, exploit the bottlenecks. There are just a lot of different things that as the German you have to juggle uh, because they're coming, they're strong, they outnumber you, they, they have the advantage of air superiority when the weather allows them to use it. So a lot of interesting situations here, the two sides do play different from one another. And generally speaking it's a game that that works very well, that flows very well. Uh, the core engine is very very simple yet with a lot of different you know secondary elements that will bring that theme, that will bring that uh, uh, that extra chrome. Hey, at the beginning you need to become a little bit familiar with the modifiers that are modified by weather, but are modified by terrain. There are some of those, but ultimately the core is very, is very simple. I don't know, it almost reminded me of one of those MMP games of the early 2000s, 2010s, Victory the Night kind of thing. It had the nice balance between a game that at the core can be played probably as an intro war game by somebody who's motivated, uh, but still has so much going on, still have all the, 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 the flash, all the flavor, all the, 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 the plenitude of a full, a full war game. So it doesn't feel at all like a war game that has been designed as an intro, but as a legit war game with a lot of stuff going on, enough to please a seasoned war gamer, that at the same time has such a simple linear core that could also be enjoyed by a beginner war gamer. So definitely high endorsement from me for The Dark Summer. Really fun, really enjoyable.